All right, don't let all this sun over my shoulder fool you. It is, it's another freezing day in Wisconsin, which means it's time to do QDX build. Stuff on the workbench in the warm workshop. Today we're gonna do the transistor controlled crystal oscillator, the TXCO, and we're going to do the power toroid. Power toroid was a little confusing. It made more sense as I was going along than it did when I was looking at it or then when I was reading it. Let's get over there and we'll figure it all out. This little one right here is the temperature controlled oscillator. And what he wants you to do is use some cut off solder legs, which I happen to have a whole collection of. Because I've been doing this for a while. So there's three of them. And then this goes over here. That's where your crystal would go if you were using a crystal, but we're gonna use this temperature controlled crystal oscillator instead. And I do this backwards compared to the way that he does it. He wants the legs and the board first. And I do mine like this. He's smarter than I am. He's probably more right than I am. Oh, wow. Okay. Those are super tiny. I was looking for the pads that are supposed to go around the outside of the holes, and I couldn't see them. They are there. They are just very, very tiny. Hans warns you in the instructions that this is a single-sided circuit board and is fragile. So, not a whole lot of heat. Get the job done. And these legs are long enough I can save them for another go round. So now we come to the binocular toroid. Binocular toroids are a little different than normal toroids, which we've got plenty of those to cover also. Binocular toroids, instead of being one pass through the center of the core is one turn, on a binocular toroid, it's one pass through each of the cores is a single turn. So this one gets a little bit weird. In addition to that, this kit has it was designed to work at 9 volts, but if you change the way this is wound, it will also work at 12 volts. And I went back and forth and back and forth in my own head trying to figure it out, because if I make this 12 volts, it uses a regular 12 volt barrel connector that I have a bunch of in my shack. I mean, heck, I've got a bunch of them just sitting right here waiting for another project coming up. And I didn't want to get things confused. And then I did some more reading on the final transistors, and the final transistors have similar, similar have some concerns of overheating and powering. And then I looked at the power output versus the voltage input and yada, 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 yada. I wound up with this as a solution. So what I'm going to do is have this as a permanent part of the, the gig. And this is a DC to DC adapter. So I will take my standard 12 volt power pole on one side and barrel jack on the other side plug and then I will plug it into here and then I will plug this into the radio so I have a 12 volt supply coming in and a 9 volt supply coming out and we can be fairly certain that we are at 9 volts so we will take a look at this in the future there will be a link to this down in the description below I got it off of Amazon the price was cheap enough that it doesn't hurt and uh, that way I feel like I am more protected on my radio kit here and there's been some sensitivity concerns and, and power output concerns so now I don't have those anymore I hope I think that's the plan that's the goal let's get down to winding this toroid you want to use the thicker wire of the two sets of wire that you get one is 22 one is 28 I think so you want to use the thicker one it's pretty obvious which one's thicker and which one's not and this wire is used on two different cores in this kit, so you do not want to use all of it. So let's get this unwrapped and get down to business. It's business time. And I think that this toroid is confusing, so let's see if we can figure this out together. I want three turns through, and then there's a center tap on one of the turns. And so it's just, it's just new for me, so let's 
Let's get that solved. All right, so that's half a turn through the, through the core. So let's put the other turn through here. And as with any toroid winding that you do, you want to make sure that nothing gets kinked up and you don't want to scratch the enamel off of it. All right, so that is one turn in binocular core terminology. And this one's actually a power transformer in case all that crazy talk about voltage and power adapters and DC to DC converters didn't clue you into that the first time around, as opposed to an RF transformer. Okay, and this one here goes all the way through. All right, so now we've got one and a half turns, and it should look like this. And this one here, we want to leave a little bit of a lead behind because we need to tap here And so there's two turns, and there's my tap. And you can start to feel it drag against the outside, so be careful because that's actually scraping the enamel off. All right, and this is the part where it got a little bit confusing for me, but I think I got to the bottom of it. We'll get all the way to the end of the install and uh, keep our fingers crossed. So we're gonna get that all the way through. And we're going to pull this all the way through nice and tight. And this is where the confusion came in because I don't like to make mistakes. But that's what you're supposed to wind up with. And then pinch this together here so that you don't get confused in the future. So we've got, this is your primary winding on your toroid. And you've got one in, one out, and one center tap. That's what you should end up with here. And then go ahead and pinch this together so that you can tell that it's not one of the loops in our future setups. So it says at the end of step five, cut it to about one centimeter protrusion. We did that. And then in the picture for step five, this wire here is right up against the edge of where the photograph ends. So it's hard to tell. And I'm not complaining. I'm just pointing it out. It's hard to tell if that wire doesn't go way off in the distance all by itself, or that it's cut. So just help clearing up some confusion there if anybody was confused like I was. And then we start with step seven, which is the three turn secondary winding. Have this set up in this orientation, push it from right to left through the bottom hole of the core, and then from left to right through the top. I guess technically we can do this at this step here because magic. I'm going to take this and fold it over like that and then put it through backwards. And then that forms that first turn like magic. See? Magic. All right, so that goes through, that gets us step seven, and we've got to go through two more times. And then this is the last turn. And then we need to cut this end off also. So you've got some wire left over for a future inductor that we need to wrap. And you've got your binocular core with three primaries and three secondaries lined up just like so. Get some contrast there for you. Is that enough contrast or is that more contrast? Okay, bend all the wires to point downward. They will need to be in the position they need to be and fit through the holes of the PCB. All right, get your circuit boards ready. And there's lots of different ways to do this step. I'm gonna try the trick that Hans talks about, which is put this in first and then use your wire strippers to strip off some enamel from the back side. Um. 
That took forever. Now he says to use these. Just strip some of the coating off. All right, so I got all four of the outer ones done. We'll get those soldered into place, and then we'll do the inner ones. And then for this last one here, I can just kind of feel it in my bones that I'm getting a little anxious. So instead of doing it with the wire strippers, where I might actually, with the wire cutters, where I might actually cut through the wire, I'm going to do it with this Stanley knife. I'm going to cut off some of the top of this so that there's less heat sink. And we're going to go for broke. A little bit of solder on the tip. And then if you do it right, you can see it work. And if you do it wrong and don't use a fume extractor, you can smell it work. It smells like uh, old Band-Aids. Not, not old dirty Band-Aids, old used Band-Aids, but old, old brand new Band-Aids. New old stock Band-Aids, that's it. New old stock Band-Aids. Unused, clean, sterile Band-Aids. And then it should kind of look like that. I mean, these are thicker than your normal wires going through. And your core is going to pick up some heat because that's what cores do. All right, and now to check our work, we get our multimeter out. Any cheap multimeter will do that has a continuity mode. Continuity mode is when you touch the two probes together, it makes a noise saying that there's a complete circuit. In the instruction manual, he gives you a diagram of test points. And you use your final transistors as one of your test points, A. And then it needs to make continuity between all the other test points, A. So that's good. That's good. And then that. And that. And that is good. Those are all the A points. And then there's B points. And the B points are here. And there. And they should test. And then none of the B points or the A points should test. There's B, A. B, A. B, A, B, A, B, A, B, A. No B, A's. That all works. That's your, your binocular pig nose transformer. Wasn't so bad, was it? We have more videos in the series lined up for you over here. Otherwise, thanks for being awesome.